Hi, it's Sherry from the LaSalle Library. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make the super cute necklace using just a few items and it's reversible. So let's talk about the supplies we're gonna need. The main component of this necklace is actually, yes, the washer. You can buy them at any hardware store or perhaps one of your friend's garages. Uh, this one is um, 3 8 by one and a half inches, but if you want it larger or smaller, that's your preference. Next, you can, you'll can you need some a bead. Uh, again, you can get those at a craft store or the dollar store will have them too. Any shapes, colors, or sizes, it's, it's up to you. Use your imagination. As for putting it all together, I just used some jute. It, it seems to go well with a lot of things. Other than that, we're going to need some glue, some scissors, a nail file, and to gloss it all up at the end, we're just going to need some clear nail polish. So let's get started. So here's the paper I've chosen to put on the first side of my necklace. So you'll take your washer, you'll put it over a spot on the paper that you think will incorporate all the colors you want, if you have several to choose from, and trace around the outside of the washer. It really helps if you have a sharp, a sharpened pencil. Now the line doesn't get too thick. So we trace around the outside of the washer. Then we're gonna trace the inside of the circle of the washer. Once you do that, let's get your scissors. And we're going to cut around the inside line where we traced. So it it's going to be exactly or maybe even just slightly smaller than the washer size itself. There we go. And it doesn't have to be perfect because there will be upcoming a way to trim off any of the extra edges. And now for the inner circle, what you can do is just fold it in half a little bit like that and then just make a little slit right there in the center and then just proceed to cut out the inside of the circle. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. The inner is a little trickier. I find making small clips the best bet. Around we go. And we have the first side of my necklace. And here's the second piece I chose. I think we have to be as exact with this. So we'll just choose a spot near the end. And we go again. All around the outside. Around the center. We'll cut this side out. And remember, just along the inside edge. And again, that pesky little circle in the middle. Give it a little snip. And there we have it, the front and back of our washer necklace. So now we're going to need to glue it on. Now I've just used regular white glue. And as I mentioned before, if you want to use a stronger glue, it's going to adhere a lot easier. So I'm going to start with one side and put some glue on there. Now 
Now what I found too is try to make it an even layer if possible. And make sure you get it right to the edges because if it's going to lift, it usually lifts at along the edge. So don't be shy of putting it off on there. Try to get it as even as you can. And I'm going to put on the first side. There you have it. Flip it over. And we're going to do the other side. It shifts a little bit, but that's okay. I'm gonna try to keep it in place. Put on the second half. Okay, so there we have it. Both kind of glued, try to center it and get a pencil and feed it through the center. Then just prop it up um, a couple of cups, whatever you have handy. I like to hold it up a little bit and pat it down and center it to make sure it's going to have the best fit. And as well as go around and pinch it a little bit to help it coax it to adhere the best way possible. There we have it. And we're going to set it down away from anything and we're going to let it dry. Well, it's been 24 hours since we let our necklace set to dry and it's looking pretty good. Both sides are nice and dry. So we need to proceed to the next step, which is to get rid of the excess paper that's along the edge of the washer. So we're going to take our nail file and start to get rid of that paper, the excess paper. So remember to always push down and away so it doesn't lift up the paper. I like to make my keep my finger underneath as I go along so it doesn't lift the paper underneath as well. So you're just going to work your way all the way around. Apply a pretty good pressure so you get makes it easier to take off the excess paper. Looks pretty good. Flip it over and we're going to do the other side. Now as you can see, I might have cut it a little bit too short, but that's crafting. <laughs> and gives a little more character. And it's okay to see a bit of the silver. It's coming off pretty good actually. That's great. Stick your fingers, brush it off as you go along. And there we have it. Looks pretty good. Now luckily I have very minimal paper left in the center of the washer. But if you're not so lucky, what you can do is take your nail file and then you can cut it down because you're going to want to have it skinny enough to get in the center of the washer. Here we go. So you're just going to take it and just file away like you did on the outside, going down. You can even just kind of go around, like on the side of it, go around, round, round. Flip her over, do the same thing on this side. Yeah, you can see there's a little bit. And 
You don't have to be that precise as well because there'll be a point where you can actually use the next step to get rid of any little edges that you don't like. So there we go. So now we're ready for the final step today, which is we want to put on a nice glossy coat to keep it resistant from moisture. So I'm going to shake up my top coat and just start liberally applying it. So don't be afraid because it just gives it kind of a better look. If it's shiny. And as you can see, it's darkening up the paper a little bit, but that's okay. Just going to try to make it all kind of the same. And what I've done with others in the past is just wait till this adheres and gets through. And call, makes the color all congruent. <sighs> Dry it up a little faster. And now I'm going to even go over it a second time. You can see at least this top coat is pretty thick. And I'm already liking the way it's looking. Might have to get down to a different vantage point to make sure it looks nice and smooth. And there we go. Once again, we're going to need 24 hours for this to dry. We're going to do the other side tomorrow. Same procedure. And I like to let it dry just like this, flat like it is. And we'll see you in 48 hours. Well, our washers have dried quite nicely, as you can see. Also, what I did notice was it, the paper didn't sit exactly the way I liked. So I'm going to amend what I told you before, and that is to cut exactly along the trace line inside and out and I found that you have better results. So here's the one, one of the other ones I did and it turned out just perfect. So now it's time, the last few steps to put it together. So you're going to take your jute and what I like to do is just wrap it around to try to determine the length or approximately, and then cut it just a little bit longer than where you want it. And you take your jute, fold it in half, like so, and we're gonna thread it right through the center of the washer, just like that. You see? And then pull that through here, make it nice and tight. So there we have it. Now we just need to thread it through our bead. Try to line it up. It makes it a lot easier if you line up the tips. And pinch and try to thread it through. I found spinning the bead helps get it through a little easier. Make it nice and tight, like so. There it is. Then I like to figure out where I want it. Just feel with the back of your hand where you figure the knot should go. Mine was right about there. Always err in the side of caution and cut it a little bit longer because can't go back. Make a nice tight knot like that. Snip off any excess. There you have it. That's all I have. Hmm. 
my smart little do-it-yourself washer necklace that's reversible. And I did it for like under $5. Thanks for joining me. I hope you had as much fun as I did. And remember to post your results on our Facebook page. Bye.